guys, this is Svetlana from Comic Cosplay and welcome to part 4 of my Monster Hunter Born Armor Crafting video series. And the costume is still not done after so many videos. And in case you missed them, I already showed you how I made the helmet of the bone armor, how I made like the upper part and also the lower part. So check out all these videos because I put an incredibly amount of work into making this costume and I really hope you like it. And now it's finally time to finish everything with a new set of dual blades again. And in case you also want to craft your very own foam weapons for your very own foam costume, I also have um, uh, the book of foam props on comicosplay.com, which is like full of helpful tutorials. And now let's finally finish this costume. Have fun watching. So let's start with the patterns. Benny took a lot of blurry screenshots in the game, but also found these cool reference images on the internet. All he needed for the weapon blueprint was a proper side view. So this one here was good enough. To begin, he placed the image in Adobe Illustrator and began to trace the shapes. After about two hours, this was what he got. Perfect. To figure out the real life size, he took some photos of me and basically compared them to the character in the game. This way the huge dual blade was supposed to be 100 cm long, but I went with 90 cm instead, so it looked more natural. Next Benny sent everything to our printer and I got several pages of paper, which I had to tape together next. Once I cut it all out, this paper dummy was perfect to see if the size was correct. And they looked pretty good to me. Then it was time for the actual crafting. The weapon was far too large for one foam sheet, so I separated it into smaller parts. Afterwards I grabbed 10mm thick EVA foam and traced everything several times onto the material. As always I used a simple utility knife to cut through the foam and just sharpened it every few minutes on my grinding stone. So here were the first 3 layers done and here are the remaining 4 layers left. Now I had to glue all of them together. Contact cement on all the edges did a pretty good job though. For extra stability I grabbed a PVC pipe which I heated up with my heat gun. This way I could easily bend it into the shape I needed. I also took some thinner pipes and attached them with a lot of hot glue to the whole build. Now the difficult part was to hide this thing inside all my foam. First I began with stacking two foam layers and then cut gaps into the material. It was quite difficult to separate the foam and keep the shape of the weapon at the same time. But once I was done, it fit perfectly, as you can see. I sometimes wonder if they use as much hot glue in Hollywood as I do, but here I melted dozens of sticks when working on this costume. However, it does the job. Then I added more glue and a little bit of foam clay to fill the gaps. And finally, it was time to spread some last contact cement and hide the PVC pipes under some more foam. In total, I used here 7 layers of 10mm EVA foam, by the way. Now, I did pretty much the same for the smaller dual blade. I hope you forgive me if I keep this part quite short, but these are basically the same steps all over again. So this was my pattern, which I used for bending the PVC pipe core into shape. Next, I took it apart as well and trace the pieces onto 10mm thick EVA foam. Since I used rather small shapes, I actually saved a lot of waste and used far less foam than if I would work with larger patterns. Following this, I cut in the gap for the pipe, glued it in, stacked more foam and more foam, and these were then both of the dual blades so far. As you can see, they were already quite large and I was happy that I made them actually 10% smaller. For the next part, I drew on some rough orientation marks and just began carving out the shape. This step was incredibly time consuming, but also super fun since it turned a simple foam block into some really cool fantasy weapons. Looked already much better, right? The larger dual blade was obviously a little bit more complicated and it took me far longer to carve everything. But I was already so excited. 
The really intense crafting part was all the Dremel work though. Here I basically smoothed out the carved surface and shaped the final form of the weapons. As you can see, I dremeled over a vacuum hose to limit the dusty mess a bit. After several hours of sanding, this was the result. Then I began carving in some texture. For this I used a simple round grinding tip and tried to make the surface rough and bumpy. I also worked with a standard grinding drum to dremel in all those lights. After all, these swords were supposed to look like they were made out of bone. Now the surface was incredibly rough from all the sanding, so I used my heat gun to melt it carefully and get rid of the dust and foam lens. The heat resistant gloves helped me to smooth out the foam as well. Finally, just a few details were missing. For the area around the grip, I cut out some foam, marked the diameter of my PVC pipe, cut a hole in, applied some glue and simply dragged the material into the right place. Then I closed the cuts with more adhesive, pressed everything on properly, shaped two further rings around the grip and glued these on as well. Following this, I brushed on some water onto my foam, grabbed my trusty foam clay and shaped a few huge rivets out of it. How do you like it so far? Now let's go back to the massive blade and speed up the crafting part here a bit. This was the smoothed out result. Carving in the texture took me literally forever. And to be honest with you, the dremeling part is really the least fun one. However, once the texture is done, it just looks so much better. And you are just incredibly excited to finally prime and paint everything. By the way, in this video, this part takes only a few seconds, but it took me actually two full weeks just to build both weapons. Now back to the small blade. For the priming, I used a lot of flex bond. Since it applies really thick, it's absolutely perfect to smooth out the rough surface of the foam. The more layers you use, the smoother it will become. And so it took me quite a while to apply seven coats of flex bond in total. Next, let's turn some foam into bone with the right paint job. Here you can see the reference again. I began with airbrushing the silver grip and the metal thingy around it first. Next, I covered the whole area with painter's tape and then it was finally time for the real fun. I could obviously paint everything by hand as well, but using an airbrush was so much faster and easier. In addition, it's amazing to apply really smooth and nice gradients. Once done, I covered the whole dual blade with matte spray varnish. Now having this protective coat, I could apply some thinned out oil paints all over the surface. Afterwards, I used a brush cleaner to wipe most of the paint away again. This step works with acrylics as well, but oil paints take longer to dry and just give me more time. As you can see, this technique is absolutely awesome to highlight any texture and this is also why I spend so much time on sanding in all the details. It's all still just foam, but with this paint job, I was able to turn it into almost real looking bony dual blades. Now I just had to apply a further coat of matte spray varnish, otherwise the oil paint would stay sticky and did some last touch ups with a brush. And well, the larger blade got the same treatment. Once I airbrushed on the basic coat and added some darker shadows, a well protective coat of spray varnish followed. And you surely also know the rest, right? Painting the larger weapon took far longer, but it's still pretty much the same technique. I kept on covering small areas with oil paint and just wiped most of the color away afterwards. The very last detail missing was the leather wrapping around the grip. I used here a thin stretchy fall leather and directly hot glued it on. This should do the job. Well, and voila, these were my finished dual blades. How do you like them? I think they look super cool and as you can see, I already couldn't wait to do some awesome posing with them. Zelda was also very impressed. <laughs> now with the whole costume and weapons done, I was ready to finally hunt some monsters. And now finally, the moment you were all waiting for. Here is the complete bone armor plus weapons in all its glory. 
In total, I worked for three months on this costume and wearing everything after so much work was an incredibly feeling. To give the costume all the love it deserves, Benny and I surely did also a proper photo shoot. Lightning Cosplay recommended us this cool desert area and we did the very best to recreate some awesome Monster Hunter scenes. It was super hot and exhausting, but as you can see, the photos were totally worth it. I even did some photos with Laura from Lightning Cosplay in her Ruffian armor. So, you made it! You made it to the very last part of this video and I really hope you like the photos especially and I hope you were able to see why I keep on doing dual blades since they're just looking amazing on the photos and I'm really really happy how the whole costume turned out even though it was a little bit intense. Like as I said, I planned it for a few weeks and these were a few months, but yes, this happens just every single time. But other than that, I also have some other costumes on my list that will come very soon on this channel. And like, if you want to see like some live crafting actually, uh, and don't want to wait for all these videos, just check out my Instagram, my Facebook, my Twitter, and also my TikTok. I post all the content there. And uh, yeah, like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. See you very soon with another far too big costume project, probably. Bye bye! Everything is good, Zelda. Everything is fine. Ah. And now finally, thanks a lot to all our super sponsors on Patreon. And these are Backslash Cosplay, Guillaume Kritzmann, Jessica Burton, Lisa, Luisa Paris, Maloops, Nif and Nico Raso 164 Thank you very much. You guys are absolutely amazing.